So over November, we watched this show, and I found myself really wanting to like it. I really did want to like it. It had a lot of things that were going for it that made me very happy and made me laugh and made me want to enjoy it. But there's one problem that the show had. Just one. And it actually showed up twice. They're, they, they made a transphobic joke in their first episode. And not even like an original one. And it just lingered with me through the whole series. We still watch the whole series, but I don't know if I liked it or not because of that one thing. And that's what I want to talk about on today's Project Shadow. I have something to say. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my latest book, Crucify My Love. And today I, I wanna I wanna talk about this one this one thing that just grinds on my soul. And if you read the name of the episode, then you know I'm talking about the Netflix series Daybreak, which had a lot in it that I thought was really funny and entertaining. And one thing, just one thing that tore it apart from me and made me not so happy about watching it. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, please take a moment to rate this podcast in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help a lot, out a lot. It tells the algorithms to share the podcast with more people. The more people that listen, the bigger the community, the bigger the community, the better the chance we have of communicating with each other. And after all, that's why I do this in the first place. Thank you to everyone who's already done that. All right. So, yeah, Daybreak. You know, if it wasn't for that one moment, I would say it was a mildly entertaining show. And it wasn't my favorite show of the year. It's not like I'm a super fan or anything. But it was enjoyable. I liked the plot twists. I liked the way that they did the story. And... It was oddly subversive in all the ways that I really wanted it to be, with one exception. You see, the thing that makes this... Well, I guess I should say what the joke was. And I, I don't actually even remember the exact words that were used. And honestly, I didn't want to load up the episode and find out again, because... Yeah, I just didn't want to do that. So, yeah. But to put it simply, it was that old tired joke where they introduced one bit player in the story, in the setting, who identified, I think, as like a rainbow unicorn or something like that. And yeah, okay. It's the attack helicopter I joke from 4chan from like 2015 and 2019, because People just think it's endlessly funny because they haven't heard it a thousand times and don't realize how stupid it is because it's the one trans joke they know because it's the one trans joke that gets repeated over and over and over again. And it's the same reason that I got frustrated with Dave Chappelle when he told a version of that joke because he's better than that. And trust me, there's a lot of things about being trans that's funny. But that isn't one. So this is an offhand remark from the first episode where we're introduced to the cast of characters that are going to take part in this, I guess we'll say zombie apocalypse story, because it's kind of a zombie apocalypse story, but not really a zombie apocalypse story. And it pulled me right out of the show which was overly problematic in so many ways, because this series hit all of the other notes so well and right on. It has a very feminist message that it carries throughout the entire story. One of the main characters is gay, and 
their relationship to their sexuality and how that informs various aspects of the story is important and meaningful and works really, really well. There are a lot of very good things about this show that I really enjoyed and could probably do episodes on should I ever feel so inclined. But right there at the beginning, as we're starting this journey into this brave new world, they make this stupid transphobic joke. And the horrible thing is, I don't think they realized it's transphobic. Now, why do I say that that's the horrible thing about it? Because I, it's one thing when somebody is just a horrible, angry, nasty person who's coming at you from a place of being horrible, angry, and nasty. Because then you know what you've got. But in a show like this, I really got the feeling that they didn't understand why the joke wasn't funny. Because when it reoccurs later, kinda, basically, I'm sorry, spoiler alert, I guess, that transish person thing is one of the survivors that we meet later in the series. Though they, they never really get a name, they don't have a line, they're, they're not really present in the series other than for that initial joke. <laughs> they they identify as a rainbow unicorn or whatever it was. And then later when we see them again being a sparkly rainbow narwhal creature thingy. Because of course they are. Yay. And I don't believe that the series intended that to be offensive. The show actually goes out of its way to mute and mitigate a lot of the, the stereotypes and other tropes of the genre that are normally offensive and problematic, and does so in a very smart, serious, and deliberate way. But this one thing, this one part that is overly upsetting, and that's the problem. It left me wondering if I'm being oversensitive to this issue because I'm trans and have dealt with a lot of transphobic ish over the years, or if it's something that's endemic or problematic to the show. Because the problem that we have as trans folk is we don't know half the time if somebody is truly transphobic and or if they're just uneducated on the issue. And this becomes an issue Primarily because of the existence of TERFs and their nasty way of being very pro feminist and very accepting often of the LGB community. Of course, without the T, I, I would love to hear their opinions on the I because the I kind of puts the lie in the idea that there are two genders, but anywho. So, yeah, the, mm, this whole thing hinges on one joke. My feelings about this series hinge on one joke. And I don't know the hearts and minds of the creators. And I will never know the hearts and minds of the creators. For goodness sakes, even if I found out that the creators had apologized for the joke, I wouldn't know if they did so because Netflix told them to do it because it was hurting their PR or if they decided to do it to try to hurt, fix their PR, and they actually were a secret turf, or they were secretly transphobic. And does that even matter? Does it matter? Should my enjoyment of a property be affected by this? Because this is not the only time that this has happened. The Amazon Prime original series, Jack Ryan, I was enjoying immensely, until again it made a transphobic joke. And I am trying to get over it because I, I'm curious about where the show is going and I kind of want to see more of it, but there was this out-of-place, unnecessary, transphobic 
joke that just popped in for no reason. And again, I do wonder if this is because it's in the zeitgeist and people don't know how to deal with trans folk. If people don't know how to deal with people that don't tick the nice little boxes that they have grown up believing in, or if it is something more dark and sinister in their hearts. And that's really the problem that I have with this whole thing, is I find myself worrying about the state of mind of the creator of a project rather than the quality of the project itself. So definitely a show should get demerits for having a transphobic joke. But how many demerits? How much should that alter the view? And I'm not sure where I'm going to end on this, because I think that's a bigger question for us to ask than we've been asking in the past. So say you're watching a show, and you've enjoyed the vast majority of it, with the exception of a brief moment of transphobia. Just a brief moment. It's not even a real thing that persists through the show. The show's not obviously going after people. It's not being hateful in a generalized way. It's just for some reason, out of the blue, for a brief moment, they decided to tell a very off-color joke that maybe they thought they were including to be edgy? Because see, that's something you always have to put into this. Is is it just somebody trying to be edgy? Because, you know, we have this odd fixation in our culture lately with edgy humor. You know, things that just push boundaries because good humor pushes boundaries. And I know I said that with a lot of sarcasm in my voice, which hopefully carried through, but yeah... No, I don't think that the point of edgy humor is actually to push boundaries, but to tell a good joke. See, I'm from the school of thought that says that jokes are funny because they're true, or they violate some basic sense of reality. That's what absurdist humor is for. That's why Monty Python was very funny, because it found ways to subvert our common understandings of how the universe actually works to tell stories and to tell jokes that made us laugh by their sheer absurdity. A transphobic joke is not absurd, and it's not edgy. It may feel edgy, but it's not. It may feel edgy because you're bringing up a topic that you're not comfortable with and you think your audience might not be comfortable with, and so you're bringing it up in a way that maybe everyone can laugh. But not everyone will laugh. See, a good good humor doesn't punch down. Good humor doesn't make fun of oppressed minorities. And see, that's where I think the line has to be drawn. But we can talk about humor much more on another episode. I've actually talked about it in the past. But we can talk about it more if you want to. Just let me know. But the real issue that we're dealing with here is should that one brief moment, a mere couple seconds out of a multi-hour production, ruin the whole thing? Is it being overly sensitive for that to happen? And the answer to that, I think, is an overly complex one. Because, yes, it's okay to like something even though there are things in it that you don't like. I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft, and he was a horribly racist individual and misogynist to boot. And I don't make apologies for his racism, and I don't say that it's part of the times. But for me, it's an odd addition to the horror. That not only was he writing such horrific fiction, but he had such horrific views on top of it. I don't apologize for him, and I don't say that we should read him because or in spite of the fact that he has such horrible views about so many different things. But I think it's hard for us to understand the history of supernatural horror without understanding his prominence and his place in that world. And of course, anytime I include a Lovecraftian element in one of my stories, 
I feel really edgy because I know that he would hate it because they're usually involving either queer characters or trans characters or women or minorities. Or he would probably say ethnics, wouldn't he? And that gives me a certain amount of joy that I'm able to reclaim something that I like and bring it out of that horrible racist and sexist milieu that it existed in previously. But having said that, that's not actually what's going on with these series. Like I said, it's one thing if we just kind of brush it off and go, well, they didn't realize that it was a joke, or we put it in the mindset of our main character, and this is also where it becomes important. Our main character believes that he understands women, and he is good with gay people, and he is, you know, enlightened on so many issues. And the whole point and purpose of the show, without giving away too much, because I don't really want to go into spoilers, because I want as many people to listen to this as possible without having to go watch the show first. He's not. And see, this is where I've come back around on this series. Him making this transphobic joke in the first episode is, in a way, the first glimpse we get into his character as being not as morally pure and enlightened as he believes that he is and as he portrays himself through his own narration of his own life. So maybe that joke is included as a way to make that revelation. It's that opening salvo to say, hey look, this character isn't quite as good as he believes himself to be because he has this transphobic point of view. Now, I don't want to put myself in the minds of the author and all of that because, well, that's never a good place to be trying to figure out what somebody else was thinking when they did something because, honestly, we will never know because anything that they say can be changed after the fact to something that sounds more appropriate and that works better in the situation. So it doesn't really matter what they were thinking. But from a certain point of view, at least from my point of view, in watching the show, it kind of feels like that's why the joke was included in the first place. Now, I can't say the same thing for Jack Ryan, because the joke really offended me in Jack Ryan, so I just stopped. And I don't know if it was a revelation about the character's mindset, or the type of person that they are. For all I know, that character ends up being trans and it's their internalized transphobia coming out. I don't know. Though I'm pretty sure I would have heard if that was the case. So, am I just making apologies for this show by coming up with a headcanon to explain it away? Because, unless, of course, we get some statement from the creators about why it was done and even then, that doesn't matter. Death of the author and all of that. Which, again, done episodes on if you want to go back and listen to them. Yeah, I think I'm okay with it. Just because the show itself did not, at least to this point, and if it gets a season two, I will be mindfully watching to make sure that it doesn't go there. But at least so far, it hasn't played itself off as turf fiction. And it hasn't presented any other transphobic jokes. So, does that mean it's okay? I'm not the one to say that. I'm not. If you are so offended by that joke that you can't watch the show anymore, then that's fine. And that's where we need to get as a society. That's where we need to get as a culture. Is having the discussion as to why the joke was there and whether or not it's appropriate for the joke to be there. One, it helps people who are creating these series to understand why they might not want to include humor like that in the future. But it also keeps us from becoming the cartoonish supervillains that we often become when situations like this arise. I don't believe in cancel culture, mainly because, I, as I've said a thousand times, I don't believe that it exists. Mel Gibson is making family movies again. So explain to me who's in celebrity land has ever really been canceled. But having said that, yeah, I don't know. 
I think I'm going to let myself understand that I liked the show because I did. And I'm going to wait and see if it continues to make really off-color transphobic jokes in the future. Because one joke does not a transphobe make. And maybe it was part of the character's growth all along. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did and you haven't already, please take a moment to rate it in whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does make a difference. Helps me out so much, you have no idea. I am continuing to work on the YouTube channel. I am trying to figure out what kind of content to put over there, so I'll put a link to the channel in the show, show notes for you. And I would like to know what you would like to be over there that's not over here. And well, yes, I know I'm producing a lot of content right now because I'm putting a lot of, I'm good. Well, <laughs> as of now, I've done, I think a couple videos over there. So I'm not like doing what I wanted to do, which was daily vlogs or anything because I'm just not there yet in my own head, but it's, it will eventually slow down into a weekly or a bi-weekly thing. Just, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to develop the habit, the in, interest in doing it right now. But let me know what you'd like to see over there. I, I would really like to know. And if you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed on this show or that one, in the show notes, you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short, keep it clean, so I can use it on the show. I would love to hear from you. If you'd rather hit me up on social media, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram as C.E. Dorset. You can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. If you have a dollar that you can pass my way, it really would help out more than you know. In the show notes, you'll find a link to both the listener support and, or I think it says community support. I think they changed the name of it recently. And my Patreon. Just a dollar a month really does go a long way to helping me make all of this for you. Helps pay for hosting for the websites and for software and eventually a new laptop because this one uh, I hope will survive as long as I need it to. Thank you for everybody who's already done doing that. If you don't have any money right now or you don't feel like giving, that is perfectly all right. But if you have any question, if you have any friends that you think would like this podcast or my books or anything that I do, please do share it with them. That helps out immensely as well. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, don't forget, have the fun. Bye.